Righty-o. Oh, you know what? I wanted to uh, actually <laughs> pour a drink uh, while we chatted. And uh, not that I think this will be a long conversation, but I just wanted to make some observations about uh, Storm over DM and Fu. And uh, that experience today, having heard it, about it being played from one of my buddies who said, oh, French can't win, it's broken. But that was from one of our buddies who doesn't get to game a lot because he has a uh, complicated life. We'll leave it at that, or maybe he just doesn't get around to playing. Um, so we got to discount that. Then I played, and then I, my buddy I played with, Pete, he played again, and that's when the French won. And so, will that be enough water? I think that'll be enough water uh, to add some bourbon to. So, um, I, uh, I played today and I didn't really get a chance to read the rules. I kind of skimmed the uh, rules summary and it took a little bit longer to kind of get into the feel of the game. And uh, my understanding is from everybody else that it plays very similar to Storm of Stalingrad and that the rules were the same and the combat values for their tanks were the same and that some of the other values for morale and things like that were the same and morale or whatever the defensive value is, morale, whatever it is. Uh, were the same as well. And once you kind of work out how to, you know, reduce a unit or, or have it be expended or flipped, uh, and then attack it again, and then attack it again a third time if you can in a, in a sequence of plays without allowing your enemy to advance in into that zone or area, and bring a you know relatively fresh units or more units in, so that you've got enough there to absorb more damage. Once you work out that sequencing as the offensive player or the defensive player, uh, it becomes a, a, a really interesting game. Up until that point, it's a little bit frustrating trying to work out how to do things. And I walked away from the game thinking, okay, it's kind of fun. Uh, it became very intense not tense, but intense in the very last turn uh, because it was all down to me needing one area to win as the Vietnamese. And the French have played really well and Peter is very good at kind of distilling a game system in his head and he's played it now two or three times. So he's got it all kind of worked out. But I managed to kind of secure a victory out of the game. And... Uh, despite myself. And what I was thinking as I was driving home, and I later on played, I later played, I taught uh, second person this week, uh, lock and load. Uh, so that was that was fun to get uh, some new guys into the system. And what I was thinking was a lot of what happened in the, the storm over the Fu was tied back to uh, Two things to the way the areas are laid next to each other and which cards I received and when I received them and then of course how I use them but that really drove the the bulk of the battle and it wasn't until I took the time to really look at the areas and uh, you know, I tried forcing the the French to reinforce one area and then I would put units in another area and attack there and, you know, kind of doing that sort of strategy slash tactical thing. Really what it came down to was looking at the geography, how the areas were split up and intersected and little pieces would come in and connect to two or three other areas, which meant I could put forces in one spot and threaten four uh, different areas at one time. Was it until, it's not until you really kind of see that and you go, oh, okay, well, they're the key areas that you want to have control of or gain control of or isolate first and then gain control of. What does all that mean? Um, it, it could have been any game. It could have been any battle, potentially. And I was wondering, do, do game designers, when they do these area-based games, do you find, uh, do they sit and look at the, the, the terrain and look at the history of the battle and then build the areas so that, such that 
you have to kind of progress in a certain way so it kind of drives a little bit of the historical narrative or is it really just put the areas down and this is the way we'll do it because this gives us the closest game as a competitive uh, exercise between two people I don't know how it works I don't know anything about designing games but you know if I really look at that it could have been I could have been anywhere I mean the map was green had some bushes and some hilly looking things and you know I, at the end of the day I could have been I could have been playing in the Roman era and Civil War area era it didn't really matter the cards give it some theme you know there's some airstrikes and some artillery and sapper things and mine shaft this and trench that but sure that's nice and that adds adds a feel and flavor for the period but there's a sameness to the game that it could be any, and particularly given that the rules are almost identical to the to the Storm of Stalgrad. So if it's all the same, if it's the same system and exactly the same set of rules, just a different set of areas and a different counter mix. I I question. I, you know, it's not what what is more of my plan. I'm playing an area of movement, conquer the area of game, kind of card driven, pseudo card driven game, small CDG. So it was, it was fun. I, mean, I had a good time. I really enjoyed the game. I, I don't know, I, I don't know how many more times I'd play it because kind of once you work, I think once you work out which areas to take first and how to take them and what's the best, best way to do it, you, I think you're kind of done with that game. Um, I don't know, maybe it changes every time because of the, the cards that you have, the cards will be different and the, what, the sequencing of the cards will be different every time. You know, I would not have won as the Vietnamese if I hadn't have received four barrages and a surprise attack on the last turn. It just would not have happened. So, uh, so anyway, good times. Enjoyed it. I enjoyed this week teaching uh, two different guys to play Lock and Load. Uh, we played the Forgotten Heroes uh, River of Perfume scenario. Uh, played a scenario of Carthage this week as well. Uh, got some vassal stuff done. I have not touched Case of Blue this week either. But really want to talk to you about uh, this Storm of DMFU. I, I quite like the game. I just query the system and the you know the historical narrative. I don't need it to be historical simulation. I'm not asking for that out of a dinky out of a little game, right? A cool little game. But I do I do just wonder about the sameness of it. If I went and put, played Storm over Stalingrad tomorrow, whether I'd look at that and go, oh, well, this is pointless. It may as well be playing the other game, right? I'm just curious about that. I'm curious about what you guys think about how that, how those area-based games, where you construct the areas and how they intersect with each other, is that really a driving force of the games? I think a lot of it, to me, it could be, right? Uh, you look at uh, Julius Caesar, the the Columbia games game. If Rome was the objective, uh, and you had to have Rome to win, you could have two areas around Rome or ten areas around Rome, and depending on how many areas you had around it, would drive how you play the game, and it would influence the history, the, how the history came about by doing that. If I have ten areas real close, and then just two around that or vice versa, 10 around and two inside, that changes how you approach the, the capturing a particular objective uh, area. So I don't know what I'm saying there, but as I, as I muddle about that game and think about it, I, uh, I wonder about how you pull the historical story out of that uh, game. It's certainly a lot more fun perhaps than Citadel. Uh, but it's certainly not the same game, right? Very different uh, intent and purpose and different audience and all the rest of it. So uh, fun game, interesting stuff, enjoyed it. Probably, I don't know how much it costs. If it if it's not, you know, over 40 bucks or something, it's probably a worthwhile game to get. Great introductory game. Good game to help people puzzle out. So, to, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a puzzle-solving game. So, uh uh, you know, non-war gamers might like that uh, type of deal. Very bloody though. A lot, not a lot of units left on the board when we play. All right, I gotta go later.